so so far in our discussion of biology, we went over the uh, few terms. We talk about the hierarchical organization of life, or or other words known as the levels of biological organization. <clears throat> we visited the term energy, and we said that energy uh, was required to maintain that organization. And as you go up in increase in order of organization, you have these emergent properties that come about. Um, also with energy, we related uh, uh, two terms here that will be carried out throughout the entire year of biology, metabolism and homeostasis. Metabolism refers to the totality of chemical reactions uh, that occur within a cell or an organism, and homeostasis is the maintenance of internal conditions within certain boundaries, and basically we suggested that homeostasis was required in order for metabolism to occur, and, and that will make a, a lot more sense once we get into the chemistry portion of our, our unit of study. So when we talk about metabolism and acquiring energy, we looked at uh, acquiring nutrients, and basically you could be an autotrophic producer, and autotrophic organisms are those organisms that make their own food, and there are two processes to which autotrophs use, they could be either uh, photoautotrophic, and those would be organisms that carry out photosynthesis, and you all heard of photosynthesis before. It's these organisms that, you know, take the inorganic substances such as water and carbon dioxide and convert it into that sugar. Um, these would be green plants, blue-green algae, cyanobacteria, but you, on the other end, you also have organisms that are heterotrophic. And these organisms do not have the capability of carrying out uh, photosynthesis or chemosynthesis, which is done by organisms in the ocean deep, uh, hydrothermal vents. Heterotrophic organisms acquire energy by consuming things, so we also call them consumers. So they need to have an intake of nutrients in order for them to survive. And of course, this would be the animals, uh, mushrooms, protist, uh, all those things are, are heterotrophic. Now there are, are several types of consumers that you may have learned about. And so there are several types of heterotrophs. You could be a uh, carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore. And from elementary school you should know that the herbivore is a plant eater, carnivore is a meat eater, and an omnivore is a uh, organism that would eat both plant material and uh, animals. So, living things respond to stimuli. So this is, a, a, in a way, we respond to our environment. Living organisms respond to their environment. So living things interact with the environment and respond to changes in the environment and we'll do a little bit of a discussion on this in class. So the way we respond, that response ensures survival of the organism and is often results in some sort of movement. So if you see the several examples here, a vulture can detect and find carcasses a mile away and soar towards dinner. Monarch butterflies can sense approach uh, a fall and migrate south where they congregate in the forest and hills of Mexico. Microorganisms can sense light and chemicals. Even leaves of plants can follow the sun. So think of the sunflower. As the sun's uh, going across the sky, the sunflower will rotate with it to assure maximum uh, solar energy to the, the disk and rays. So we too, as humans, even respond to stimuli. Think about uh, how we respond to our environment if it gets cold or if it gets too hot and how that would play a role in homeostasis to ensure metabolism. Um, if we touch a hot stove, what is the reaction there? If something falls on our foot, we have these, these st stimuli in the environment, and then of course we respond to that. The activity as a response, as a result of the response, is our behavior. So the way we, we respond to that stimulus is our behavior and in college you could take an entire course on animal behavior
So why do uh, um, living things reproduce and develop? So this is another characteristic of living things, that all living things reproduce and develop. Organisms live and we die. It, it's all a part of life. But what reproduction ensures, it ensures the uh, continuity of your species, that your species can continue into the future. So all living organisms must reproduce to ensure your existence and maintain a, a certain population size. So there are two basic types of reproduction. There is asexual reproduction and there's sexual reproduction. asexual versus sexual reproduction. Basically, in asexual reproduction, you have an organism that doesn't uh, require the exchange of sperm and egg to reproduce. But in sexual reproduction, you have that exchange of sperm and egg in order to reproduce. So when we talk about us, we are multicellular organisms, just like uh, many other animals in the animal kingdom. In most multicellular organisms, re reproduction requires the exchange of sperm and egg and the union of sperm and egg, which would be fertilization, to produce the new organism. And then that is followed by cell division, where the cells, upon fertilization, will then eventually start to divide and then differentiate in the many different cell types of that organism. So for us, we could be talking about neurocytes or nerve cells or adipocytes, which are fat cells or epithelial cells or cardiac cells, all those different cells, muscular cells, skeletal cells. So all those things, would, all those cells would start to differentiate to make up the various organs and then come together to make the organ systems and then definitely come together to make the organism as a whole. Uh, the basic cell type before differentiation in, in the multicellular organism would be that, that those stem cells. And you've heard a lot about stem cells um, and stem cell research. So what stem cells can do, they start off as a cell, but then they have the instructions to differentiate into all those other various cell types. So where does that, those instructions come from? Those instructions come from DNA. So developmental instructions are encoded in genes and we know that genes are functional units of DNA. DNA, all living things, are based off of that universal genetic code known as DNA. That's, that's another characteristic of life. And this is where scientists battle over uh, the, the concept of whether viruses are true living things or not because they have, uh, they're more RNA-based. There are some viruses more RNA-based than DNA-based. So all living things are based off of that universal genetic code known as DNA. And DNA, as you know, is that long spiral molecule in, uh, that is uh, of chromosomes. So um, DNA contains the genes, and it's the genes that give the coded instructions to which the cells will divide and then further differentiate into the certain cell type that is needed to make up the organism as a whole. So here you can see that each cell has that that code of instructions and then upon division it will uh, determine what it's going to be as it matures into that that mature stage so whether it be a cardiac cell the muscle cell whatever so we have the cell differentiate to create the organism the dna in the cells also have uh, many other functions other than cell differentiation and we'll get into that when we talk about uh, cells and in uh, DNA and RNA and all that other fun stuff of biology. So basically, characteristic of life, all living things reproduce and develop. Reproduction is to ensure the survival of your species that it can continue into the future. Development is different. Development is when you go through, think about when you were an infant, to child, to adolescent, to young adult, to adult, and then to uh, elderly stage. Think about the changes your body has gone through. That is referring to development. 
as a, an adolescent you are developing right now. There are many changes occurring in your body. Think about the changes and the secondary sex characteristics that are, are occurring or may have already occurred in middle school. So that is a part of development. And here's a picture of rock copper penguins uh, nurturing their offspring. Another characteristic of life is that all living things evolve. We adapt to change. Um, an adaptation is a modification that makes organisms more suited to its way of life. Um, organisms become modified or change to their environment over long periods of time. This isn't something that just happens instantly. And we, we modify or, or adapt to our environment um, because we respond to the environmental changes by developing these new adaptations. However, organisms very similar at a basic level suggest that living things descend from the same ancestor. And then we have that descent with modification, which is evolution. And we know that evolution uh, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution is driven by natural selection. And we'll talk about natural selection and evolution uh, as it relates to biology, because it is a fundamental theory of biology, and um, it's interwoven into uh, several, several concepts that we'll go through throughout the year. But we uh, um, will just touch on it in certain chapters. There's a whole unit devoted to evolution later. So evolution is a unifying concept of biology. Despite diversity, organisms share the same basic characteristics. Organisms are composed of cells, organized in a similar manner. Their genes are composed of DNA. They carry out the same metabolic reactions to acquire energy. Uh, this suggests that they are descendant from that common ancest ancestor. So this wraps up the, uh, our discussion on the characteristics of life. Our, our next unit to this chapter would be classification, and then we'll wrap this chapter up with our final lecture on the scientific method.